Hello, my name is Bill Richardson. I'm the interim principal of Owen J. Roberts High School, and you are currently watching the Owen J. Roberts High School virtual ninth grade orientation. During this orientation, we're going to walk through uh, the people that you may need to know in the high school as a resource, including high school administrators. I'm going to introduce you to our um, athletic director. I'm going to introduce you to the high school counselors who you'll get to know um, throughout the year. Uh, we're going to wrap up with a presentation by one of our math teachers, Mrs. Leah Braun. And she's going to talk to you about um, academic orientation and expectations for the year and how to be successful as a student um, in your first year. So one of the first things I'm going to do is introduce you to our high school website and in the process introduce you to some of our other um, administrators. So follow me onto the high school website. And if you happen to get to the district home and need to find the high school website, um, simply use the drop down here and roll down to the high school, click on that, and you'll get to the high school website. Um, under the About Us tab, you can roll down to Administration. And on the first page, you'll find me as the interim uh, principal of the high school. Um, you will also see Dr. Early there. He'll be, um, that page will be going away. Dr. Early retired yesterday. We wish him well. Um, next page is Mrs. Caroline Slade, assistant principal. She has been assistant principal here for four years and is continuing. And this year, she will be the 11th grade uh, principal. Mr. Eric Wenzel, his page will be up in, uh, by the time uh, this goes live, you'll see Mr. Wenzel's page, um, and that's where you can find out about the high school administrators. Um, I'll be spending some time today on the reopening page because there's lots of resources in there. I just clicked on the fall reopening link right here on the high school webpage, and we'll be walking down through that in a moment. As ninth graders who are new to the school, we have um, some new scheduling issues to go over with you and make sure you understand how we're starting the year. So um, as you are aware, we're, we're starting in the virtual mode, with, which means most students will not be coming to the building. There is an option for uh, students with IEPs and 504 plans to come to the building. And if you are one of those students, you've already been contacted and selected whether you want to come into the building or not. But from September 8th, the first day of school, through at least October 9th, which is a Friday, we'll be um, running school virtually. Um, the schedule during um, the remote learning, virtual learning, will be the high school blended plan that we talked about during the four uh, virtual open houses on the blended plan. And this is the generalized schedule, which I wanna go over with you. So each student um, will be attending during this, this plan um, virtually. So you will be following your schedule, periods one through seven. Everybody has a schedule. That's not changed. You same teachers, same schedule, and same periods. And you'll be attending remotely periods one through seven from home. You log in uh, versus, uh, via a Google Meet. Those instructions will be on your, your Canvas page. And you attend periods one through seven according to your schedule. During um, the time when we come back in the blended plan and students are in the building, um, that schedule will look a little bit different, but for now, Monday and Tuesday, all students attending uh, virtually, and Thursday and Friday, all students attending virtually. So I'm going to skip to what the first week looks like because it's a short week, and uh, Monday is a holiday, and you are off on, on that day, and then the first day is um, September 8th. We have a five-day rotation at the high school. So we just move through those five days in sequence, no matter what day of the week it is. So um, this is very similar to last year when we were in person, we used a five day schedule. And this is so that classes that are scheduled um, for less than five days don't get disproportionately missed. So September 8th, that's a Tuesday, day one, everybody is learning from home. All Wednesdays are student asynchronous days, no students in the building and students don't have to follow the schedule that day. There are teacher office hours, which I'll show you in a few minutes, and you have um, the ability to contact the teacher for individual help that day or small group work. And then Thursday, day two, Friday, day three, and so on and so forth. Um, so again, during our virtual startup, everybody's at home except for those students I mentioned. When we go back to the blended model, 
and we actually have groups of students in, in school for two days a week and being um, synchronous learning from home two days a week, this is the schedule. So groups A and C, um, that's the alphabet A to K, are coming into the building Monday and Tuesday. Wednesday is still, a, still asynchronous. And then Thursday and Friday, that same group of students is learning from home following the same schedule. Um, it's reversed for students that are L to Z. On Monday and Tuesday, they are synchronous at home. Wednesday, the same. If it's uh, asynchronous day. And Thursday, Friday is when that group of students is in the building. Um, these schedules will be posted, um, and please feel free to call if you have questions uh, about those. So we have several goals for you uh, for the year. Um, we know that this virtual um, model for learning is, is new and different. We did get a practice with it in the spring of last year. And um, we're rolling out some new tools this year. So there's some new things this year that you'll need to get used to. Um, the teachers are going to ease the students into that. They're gonna work with them to practice the types of tools they'll be using in the first few days of school so that we can come up to speed and all be on the same page and make sure that we're successful using the tools we have. So the first few days of school will be more focused on learning um, the tools that we're going to need to be successful as opposed to um, a lot of content and, and we'll just ease into it. Um, be present, be in your classes. Uh, your classes are scheduled periods one through seven. The best way that this works is if you are attending all your classes um, and we'll be taking attendance. Um, do your best at all times and when you have questions communicate ask your teachers um, you'll have the ability to do this remotely during class you'll have the ability to email your teachers and ask questions and set up um, times where you can um, access them during office hours and small group work or one-on-one -on -one instruction on Wednesdays I'm gonna go to the instructional model page uh, here again I'm under fall reopening on the high school web page and under instruction um, and if you look under here, we have a couple new things. Um, we have a virtual code of conduct, which I would like all parents uh, and students to read through. And this has some guidelines for digital citizenship, how to be a good citizen while you're learning via a remote medium like Google Meet, how to be prepared and participate, um, and uh, academic integrity and discipline issues that um, everybody should be aware of. Uh, for uh, working remotely. So please go and read through that. And make sure you understand that. I'll leave that there for you. And I mentioned Wednesday office hours. So here's a breakdown of those by department. Um, you'll see that Mrs. Christman is available by appointment, uh, as is Mr. Yoder, who is our uh, technology um, teacher on assignment. He is here full time all year assisting teachers and he's also available to help students. That's his information there, and there's a link for a help ticket if you need help with anything. Um, our asynchronous Wednesday office hours by appointment, you see the blocks of time by department here. Um, if you need to meet with a teacher outside of those hours, please email them, just like a regular school year, if you have an issue and a pro or a problem, something you need help with, communicate with your teacher, and, and they'll definitely be getting in touch with you to help you out. Um, there are guidelines for our phys ed classes since we're remote and we'll be seeing uh, you in front of us. Uh, we have guidelines for that. You can read there and how our library is working. I'm going to jump back to the uh, first item on the tab there, the August-September schedule. If you click on that and open up that calendar, you will see we're here on August 31st, virtual freshman orientation. There are a number of items here. Um, that you can access and that are linked. Um, so if you are a student who is a cyber student and not attending school this year, you've enrolled in our cyber academy, um, there's information on your book pickup right there. If you are someone who is uh, uh, not in the cyber academy attending school, we have book pick pickup information for non-cyber academy students linked down here as well. We also have information on the freshman walk. I'll talk about that in a minute. But this has your schedule essentially through the end of September. So you can take a look and then link to specific things that you might need to link to. More detailed information about textbook pickup is under this tab. And you can see that we have a different schedule for Cyber Academy students. They'll be coming to the building 
um, to the auxiliary gym and picking up their books there. There's uh, a schedule for that linked here and a map of where to enter the auxiliary gym. The auxiliary gym is right here. That is the auxiliary gym. Or actually, that's the main gym. Sorry, the auxiliary gym is back here. It's a little bit lower. So there's a, you're going to enter through the trainer room area and go in and pick up your um, books there and then exit. And you have a schedule to go through September 1 through September 4. If for some reason that schedule isn't fitting your needs, please call and we'll, we'll make arrangements for you to come in and pick the books up. And we have the nine non-cyber academy. So if you're just if you're not signed up for the cyber academy, um, you're a ninth grade student, we have ninth grade orientation and your walkthrough um, is part of that orientation. There's a schedule for you to walk through the building. Um, so if you are, uh, again, a non-cyber student and interested in picking up your books and seeing where your classes will be once we're in the building, here is your schedule. You, um, it is broken up by advisory teacher. So on your schedule, everybody has an advisory. Look for the teacher's name and then your time here to come in and walk your schedule. There will be maps in the front of the building. You'll be able to pick up a map, walk through the building. There will be people in the building, so make sure you are masked and um, observing physical distancing rules. But there will also be people to kind of point you in the right direction if you need it in addition to having a map. And these times are laid out for you here. Um, again, please uh, contact us if you're having trouble getting here on any of these times. This is intended to allow time for a student and parent to walk through the building together and figure out where they're going and also pick up your books which will be sitting outside of the rooms that are on your schedule. Each ninth grader should have picked up a Chromebook. Um, if not, uh, contact us and we'll make sure you get one. Uh, there are some new things that you'll be learning um, based on the new technology we'll be using and also as you're coming up to um, ninth grade, our learning management system is Canvas. Canvas is a little different than Google, but we use them both. Canvas is where you're going to get all of your class information, and you'll be using Google Apps on the Chromebook to do, do some of your work as well as to store files and work collaboratively. collaboratively. Um, this page for Canvas and Chromebooks has a bunch of interesting things that you can kind of get a head start on getting to know Canvas. You can uh, jump into this student orientation playlist. Um, there's quick links for Chromebooks here and a Canvas knowledge base tutorial. If you view those ahead of time, you'll be in good shape. Um, if you don't, your English teachers, all ninth grade English teachers are going to spend time with you on the first couple of days of school working on assignments specifically designed to get you to know Canvas and work with Canvas so that you're comfortable with it. Um, parents, there's a Canvas resource guide here. It tells you how to log into Canvas and get the information that you need to get to be able to see what your student is doing. It's not the student's Canvas page um, with the access they have, but it enables you to view it and look at the assignments and look at what's going on in their classroom. So please take advantage of going to this page and learning about a little bit ahead of time about your new learning management system, Canvas. I'm going to click on the general information link here because I want you to know that under that link we have the student handbook. Students should look into the handbook and kind of become familiar with it. Um, if you look in the table of contents, you'll see that you can see the staff that we have here at the high school listed, learn about activities and athletics, our school policies, very important for you to know these policies, and also um, some of these, uh, some of the discipline that might go along with violating those policies. We want everybody to be safe at school and have a good experience. And so we have some rules uh, to conform to that um, help everybody have a safe um, school experience. Please read through the student handbook and specifically pay attention to areas that you think might pertain to you. But there's a lot of information in here um, that's, that it's gonna help you kind of have a successful year as well as uh, learning a bit about the building and about the teachers in the building. One of the last things I'm going to touch on is um, Cyber Academy. Um, if you are a Cyber Academy student, you've already signed up. If you think you want to be a Cyber Academy student and haven't signed up, um, you're going to contact um, Mr. Eric Wenzel if you're a ninth grader. 
um, and then we will get you signed up for the Cyber Academy. The Cyber Academy um, students attend the exact same classes that our, that our other students attend. They follow the same schedule that they were issued. Um, the teachers are the same and they're in the classes with the same students. And they're just attending virtually for the year. Um, so even when we move back into the blended model after October 9th sometime, um, cyber students will continue to attend virtually. Um, at some time during the year, if you decide that um, we're back in school and that's something that you want to do instead of being a cyber student, again, you would contact Mr. Wenzel and we'll talk about making that transition at that time. Um, I'm going to jump back here. Uh, if you are uh, attending or thinking about attending Cat Pickering, um, that uh, we will find inform you will find information here about their reopening. Um, so we can talk about that at another time. I just want to wrap up by um, saying that you know, welcome to the high school. We know this year is starting a little differently. Um, if you need more information about how we're starting and what we're doing, we are starting virtually as a reminder. All students are starting virtually from home. If you need assistance picking up your Chromebook, please call the high school main office. We'll get your Chromebook to you. Um, we are starting uh, instruction on September 8th. That's our first day of school, all virtual until about October 9th, at which time a decision will be made about um, moving to the blended model. Uh, at this time, uh, I'm gonna introduce Dr. Randall Cuthbert, who is our athletic director, and he's gonna talk to you for a few moments. Um, I wish you a good, successful year, and look forward to seeing you around school when we get here. Thanks very much. Good morning, freshmen. I am Dr. Cuthbert. I'm the district athletic director. I want to welcome you to OJR High School. We're excited to have you here, and we're looking forward to working with you in the coming years. I'm here to talk about the athletic program. We have offerings in the fall six for girls and four for boys. In the winter, three for boys and three for girls. And in the spring, four for boys and three for girls. We encourage you to participate, try out for teams, and get involved and connected to your school community. There's also many activities and clubs you can join. We believe that there are many positive benefits to be involved in athletics and activities. We believe in student athletes, uh, gonna be the student before the athlete, uh, so there are requirements for participation. Um, our eligibility for sports is checked weekly during the season and it goes cumulative by the marking period. Uh, you won't be able to participate if you're failing more than one subject. In the first week this happens, you can practice and play. The second week, you can't practice or play. And then the third week, you're removed from the team. So please take your academics seriously. Uh, academics and athletics do go hand in hand. Information for sports can be found on the athletic website, ojrwildcats.org, so I encourage you guys to go there. Uh, everything is there, all of our announcements, um, forms, information. Uh, we also use online registration now with Family ID, so you'll need to register before every season um, on Family ID, and there's an icon on the front page of the, of the athletic website for you to do that. On the front page, you also see our Twitter account at AthleticsOJR with a capital A and a capital O. Um, we also tweet out announcements, uh, changes, um, things like that. So uh, become familiar with the athletic website and the Twitter uh, account that we use. Um, if you have any questions, feel free to email, call, uh, or stop by the office if we're in school. Uh, I look forward to working with you, and I hope that you have a great high school experience and we're all here to help. Have a good day. I'm Aiden Fry and I'm the commanding officer of NJRTC. As an incoming freshman, I was very hesitant to join the unit. Looking back on it now though, I wouldn't be equipped with the skills and opportunities I currently have. It would be an honor to see you in the unit and see you succeed like countless other cadets have. Owen J. Roberts, NJROTC, provides new cadets with a sense of community and family, regardless of where you come from. Every cadet has a place in ONJ Roberts and JROTC. NJROTC has a wide variety of teams and activities to partake in. Let's take a look at what each team has to offer. The Marksmanship or Air Rifle Team is a team described by its commander, Cadet Aiden Fry. 
as a hobby that is fun and can support the development of your character. On the air rifle team, you learn gun safety, but also meet people all around the world and experience lessons that not only apply to marksmanship, but to life in general. The Color Guard team goes to school board meetings, football games, and various other events carrying the colors of the United States. The team commander, Kaylee Meinhardt, recalls how throughout her past two years she has grown to love not only helping out, but being involved in Color Guard. Every event there was, she would go to because it gave her so much joy in being able to hold a flag that young men and women gave their lives for. Exhibition Drill, or Arm Trick, is a fun team and a great way to introduce yourself to new people. Getting to spin and throw real rifles is just an added bonus. You get to show off your newly learned skill at basketball games and other groups. Joining Arm Trick is another reason to join OJR and JROTC. NJROTC has two other drill teams, known as Arm Drill and Unarmed Drill. In both teams, cadets will learn military drill with or without a rifle, depending on which team you choose. Not only does OJR's drill teams compete at many different drill competitions, but drill also allows cadets to achieve improved posture and create new friendships. Cadet Alex Dunn mentions how drill is always the best part of his day. Any musicians or anyone looking to learn an instrument can join OJR's fife and drum team. This team plays music, sets cadence, and leads the unit at ceremonies and many NJROTC events. The team has played service anthems for veterans and has also had parts in memorial services and funerals. NJROTC's athletic team meets once a week after school to exercise, and it can both improve athleticism and build confidence. The athletic team competes in different competitions across various states, all the while improving health, having fun, and making long-lasting friendships. The Cyber Patriot team teaches cadets how to be safe online. The team also teaches cadets about the inner workings of computers and how people can use computers to their advantages. Each cadet has a chance to secure a leadership role in any one of the aforementioned team. The leadership opportunities in NJROTC do not stop there though. In NJROTC, there are many departments such as supply, administration, operations, public affairs, as well as company leadership. For each department, there is an officer and chief allowing for many chances to get leadership experience. Whether or not you plan on going to college, leadership experience is a very valuable attribute in life. If you're looking to serve your community and gain community service hours, NJROTC provides opportunities for that also, with events ranging from volunteering at a Veterans Affairs Hospital to cleaning up parks. There is no shortage of service in NJROTC. NJROTC also has a wide variety of field trips available to each cadet every year, which can range from going on U.S. Navy ships to going to football games at the U.S. Naval Academy. Some other things to note about NJROTC is that it counts as a physical education credit. What this means is that you do not need to be enrolled in a gym class if you are taking a naval science course. Also, there is no military obligation after joining NJROTC. However, if you do choose to serve in the military after high school, cadets accepted for enlistment to provide evidence of successful completion of at least three years of NJROTC are entitled to advanced promotion to the pay grade E3. Moreover, the senior naval science instructor is authorized to nominate three eligible cadets each year to compete for United States Naval Academy appointments. NJROTC prepares each cadet for success with its supportive community, leadership opportunities, and community service opportunities. If you want to be a part of an organization where every student can find a place, then Owen J. Roberts NJROTC is for you. Hello, my name is Mr. Gilbert. I'm uh, one of the school counselors at the high school. Welcome to this video for orientation to the high school. I'm super excited to be here and work with everything, everyone on this, uh, you know, unusual start to the school year. Uh, I can assure you that it's going to be a good year. Looking forward to it. I know all the other counselors are looking forward to getting started and working with the new ninth grade students. 
So some of the changes at the high school or the differences are the things that I want to go over with you in this video. One of the main changes is that you won't have a counselor per grade. It will be broken into alphabet. We have four grades at the high school. And we have six counselors at the high school and it's broken down alphabetically. So if your last name falls in a certain category, that's the person who will be your school counselor for the next four years. I personally have the S, H to Z portion of the alphabet. So if your last name falls into that category, I will be your counselor for the next four years. I'm going to pause and let the counselors introduce themselves so you can put a face with a name. So uh, if we happen to, to get back to school, you'll know who that person is. And if you video conference with them, you'll also know who that person is by meeting them this evening. I'm Megan Newding. I am one of the high school counselors. I deal with students with the last names of A through C O. Thanks. Hi everyone. My name is Brittany Williams and I am the school counselor for students with the last names C P through G L. I look forward to getting to know each of you over the next four years. I'm Mrs. Karras, one of the school counselors of the high school. I have students with the last names G M through L A. Go Wildcats! Hi everyone, my name is Miss Arnst. I work with all students whose last names begin with the letters LB through NZ and all students who attend the Technical College High School Pickering. I hope you all have a fantastic school year. Hi everyone, my name is Mr. Pagano. I work with students whose last names begin with O through SH. Um, I'm looking forward to getting to know everybody this year and working with you um, throughout the rest of your high school career. Okay, welcome back. I hope everyone got, to, got a chance to meet their school counselor and feel comfortable with that person. Uh, we're gonna have a lot of different ways that we're gonna contact you and that you can contact us. Phone and email are going to be the most typical ways that we will communicate in this virtual setting. However, we will have a sign-up sheet where if you really wanna meet like in a video type format with your counselor, you can sign up on that sheet and then we will reach out to you and set up a time when that meeting can occur. So a lot of different ways of communicating. Uh, one of the things that I think is going to be super important in this format is the actual communication. So please make sure that you're, you're checking your email and you're, you're responding to voicemails. If someone's leaving you a voicemail, we're going to do the same. We're going to try to be super responsive in those formats. Uh, I think, again, that, that communication piece is going to be uh, really a big deal. Now, one of the other changes at the high school is that we work on a five-day format. So we have days one through five. And another change is that we have a seven-day school day. So we don't have eight periods. I believe you had eight periods in the middle school. We have seven periods in the high school. So if you haven't taken a chance to, to look at your schedule, please take the opportunity to look through your schedule Make sure that you have the right number of credits. You should, most students should have more than six credits total in their schedule. Now it's going to be broken down into a, a lot of times it's broken into a fall and a spring format. So look at that and make sure you have all your major subjects and your physical education classes and all the appropriate things in your schedule. So we can address those now if there's any needs or gaps in your schedule. Uh, one of the groups that we work with at the high school is a student assistance. I want you to know that uh, Mrs. Mahoney and the WRAP Room, that's our student assistance program. We work closely with them on counseling resources. So if, if you ever need any outside resources, she's a terrific uh, resource for students and parents. So don't hesitate. She will also be doing the virtual thing and, and be accessible through voicemail and through email. Uh, one of the things that we've done as a department is because of the virtual format that we're starting with, we've worked really hard to increase our resources online and on Canvas and on our website. So we've added a lot of really important things on there that will probably answer a lot of questions if you go in there and look around. So make sure that you're looking at the website, take some time to uh, familiarize yourself with the high school and the school counseling page. There's a, there's a tremendous amount of information there from course selection to college information to, you know, just general planning. So please take some time uh, to research that and take a look at that before the school year starts. Um, in closing, I really look forward to working with you guys. I know all the counselors are excited. Uh, you have terrific teachers at the high school, so I don't want you to be nervous 
about this school year and how it's starting because you have teachers who are going to go above and beyond in every way that you can think of to help you and make sure that this is okay. Uh, so I think it's gonna really be a lot more than just okay. I think it's gonna be a great year despite the challenges that we have. I think if we all work together and we're all flexible and patient, it's really going to be a good year. So looking forward to it and uh, you know we will see you real soon. Hello parents of ninth graders. My name is Leah Braun. I'm a teacher here at the high school for um, 24 years. I have four kids, two grads of O&J, and I have a ninth grader just like you, and I have an eighth grader at the middle school. I've been um, teaching here for years, and I have lots of experience with ninth graders, and I know the struggles that come from being in a brand new building and um, learning all new platforms and all that good stuff. So I have some tricks for you. Let me tell you something first. You need to trust the teachers. We're professionals, we've done this for a long time and we care about your kids. We want them to do well, we want them to succeed. Um, we are here to challenge your kids, we're here to motivate your kids, and we're here most importantly to prepare them for what happens when they leave us. Will they go to work or college or a technical school? Um, that's our main goal is to try to teach them some independence so when they leave us, I know it's shocking that, that we're thinking of that, but um, when they leave, we want them to be ready for that. So the biggest question that usually comes at me is how is it different at the high school from the middle school? Um, the pace of the courses and the rigor of the classes, um, that's the biggest challenge for the kids. Um, due dates at the high school are firm. So if something's due Friday, Monday, it's just late. Um, there are very few options for retakes, for quiz retakes, there's no do-overs. Um, you know, it varies teacher by teacher, but for the most part, um, um, quizzes and tests are what they are and we move forward. Um, we're not big on constantly reminding kids when things are due. We're trying to teach kids to be independent learners and to prepare. So um, we'll tell kids when an assignment is due, but there will not be a constant reminder of um, what they need to do. Are you saying that we're trying to make independent learners? That's the plan. Um, so what can you do? What can you do at home to get your kids ready for September 8th? Um, you need to please sit down with your kids, set up super clear expectations. You have to go to bed at 10 o'clock. You may not have a zero on an assignment. That's not acceptable. Um, and then clear consequences. Um, set up a study space at home because we are virtual right now. It's a little bit tricky. Give them a place to work where it's quiet. Buy decent earbuds if you can with a, with a microphone so that the kids can participate. Um, in class, get them a notebook and pens and pencils and all that good stuff. Um, teachers will be um, letting the kids know what they need for each class individually, so there's no school supply list. But each teacher will individually tell the kids what the expectations are. Buy a planner, buy a planner, buy a planner for your kids and help them to use it. Middle school, I know, my ninth grader didn't use a planner until I, here's what we did. I said, use a planner and you can either hand me the completed planner so I can see what you did or you can hand me your phone. So, um, you know, there's a way to teach your kids. There's a way to motivate, let's use that word. Let's motivate our kids to use a planner so that every single day, just check in. Hey, let me see your planner. Let's see what you did today and what you have to do for tomorrow. If the planner's not complete, you can give me your phone. And then um, when we get into a better pattern, it's 21 days to build a habit. 21 days is a long time. I know it is, but once you get through the 21 days, you can sort of back off a little bit um, and the kids will be ready to use the planners, teach them how to use it. One of the things I taught my older kids is if something is due on Friday, 
have them write it down in their planner on Wednesday and on Thursday, and maybe even Tuesday if it's a big assignment so that they can backtrack. Tuesday, oh, I have a science test on Friday. Wednesday, science test on Friday. And they have the visual, and if they write it down, um, they're more apt to remember it. So let's get those planners going. Also on the calendar part, so you can do the daily part to write down assignments on the calendar part. Make them write down when they have practice, when they have um, a piano lesson, all that good stuff so they can see how busy they really are and it will be easier to um, manage time when everything is in one place. Okay, on their phones, make sure they have three things. Teach your kids how to email teachers from their phones. So email on the phones. Number two, make sure they have the Canvas app. <clears throat> when, you're uploading, um, when you're uploading assignments to Canvas, it's so much easier from a phone. Um, so the Canvas app, get that set up, and then make sure they have Skyward on their phones so that they can check their grades um, daily. Okay, there's an email that is sent where you can follow Canvas as a parent, and you can also find that on the um, high school homepage, how to follow Canvas on as a parent, so you can help your kids out with that. Set up a time when you and your kiddos are going to sit down and discuss the expectations and make a plan for the week. So you look at grades, you talk about um, how they've done, you talk about what tests and quizzes and assignments they have for the upcoming week and help them plan. This is not permanent. This is something that you'll do maybe for the first two semesters, for the uh, first semester. And then once you have it set up and your kids are good to go, you can sort of back off. The goal for ninth grade, for you and I together and all of the other teachers, teaching kids to be self-advocates and teach them to be independent learners. They don't need a middleman anymore. The teacher to the student is the best communication. Parents can intervene when you get stuck, but don't be doing things for your kids. You're not helping them. I want to help your kids. The other teachers want to help your kids. So the best way to do that is for your child and I to speak and the teachers and I to speak so that we can get what your child needs and um, avoid the middleman. There can, be, there can be confusion. Listen, we got this. Everybody keeps saying that. We got this, we can do it. It's going to be tricky. Um, communication with teachers is so important. Have your child constantly be chatting with teachers and meeting with teachers. There's lots of times this year where um, there's options for one-on-one um, -on -one tutoring or office hours where kids can check in and um, Communication is so important. So uh, if you have any problems, reach out to teachers. We're here to help you. And I will see you all out in the community. I hope everyone is well. We look forward to seeing your kids one-on-one. -on -one. We really, really miss their faces. And I hope everyone is well. Take care.